The date is the 27th of March 1999. Low over the Serbian countryside, an F-117 Nighthawk rips through the dark, stormy sky. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Darrell Zalko, and his job is to bomb the Serbian Air Force's command center in Belgrade. Tonight, the force's main office will try to stop him from doing his job. F-16 Vipers with weapons that can lock on and destroy enemy radar are following Zalko. As he gets closer to the border with Serbia, he hears a radio message. Because of the bad weather, the Vipers that are guarding are told to turn around and go back to base right away. He is by himself. He needs to stay hidden if he wants to get home safely. Somebody. He's in the most advanced operating fighter bomber that has ever been built, which is good. The six five-foot-long Nighthawk bomber looks like a tennis ball on radar, thanks to its stealth features. So far, it has been able to complete all of its missions without being harmed. In other words, every task before this one. On the ground, there is a battery of anti-air missiles ready for him. Lieutenant Colonel Zoltan Dani is in charge of it. He knows that enemy planes are coming because Serbian spies told him so. He thinks that today is his best chance to kill one of the legendary ghosts. Danny tells them to sweep the skies. The P-18 early warning system then starts to work. At its lowest frequency, they think it might be able to pick up enemy planes, but it also picks up clouds and rain, is, so the screen that? is full of fake signals. I'm trying. But Danny sees Not something yet. when she looks more closely. A very small dot going through a lot of clouds. There was a tiny dot going straight for them. Zalko's Nighthawk is moving quickly toward its target, and the computer is getting ready for the drop. Danny checks the low-frequency radar one more time. He can see the goal. They can see it. To get a lock, though, he needs a SAM radar. As told, the men look up at the sky. The screens are still blank, though. Then Zalko opens his bomb bay, which makes the Nighthawk more visible on radar at the worst possible time. Prepare for launch now! The launcher fires two rockets very quickly, one after the other. Zalko drops his bombs as he flies across the sky. They go in the direction shown by the laser and blow up. He flies past the goal. He goes up to six kilometers and completes another task. However, after a short time, an urgent alarm goes off in his cabin and his control flies up. It's a lock signal. Pretty much at the same time, he sees both rockets hit and light up the clouds below him. They're heading straight for him. He starts to avoid being caught right away. He pulls up his plane to try to get away. As the plane goes up, it screams more threats at him and pushes him into his seat. The F-117 doesn't have any chaff, so when the missile locks on, it's up to the pilot to try to get away from it. Things take longer. He knows it's over. They got me. Since these are proximity rockets, they should go off close to the plane. The first rocket doesn't work right, so it speeds by his canopy. But the second rocket doesn't have any problems. It goes off shooting a cloud of sharp fragments that pierce his Nighthawk's left wing. The whole left side has been blasted apart, turning the night sky a bright orange color. The plane loses control right away and goes into a crazy spin. Zalko is stuck in his seat and feels strong. G-forces as the plane spins. The violence in the spin gets worse. Flashing signals light up his controls, and as the world spins around him, a bright flame shines through the cockpit windows. He is aware that things are very bad for him. He has no other choice but to be ejected, which could kill him. Seven Gs of force are pulling up on each of his arms, which is 100 pounds. With a rush of energy, he grabs the ejection, handles and pulls. As fast as you can blink, the cover is gone and his seat rockets out of the cockpit. Zalko free falls through the air while stuck to his chair for one and a half seconds. It seems like time has stopped. He's barely awake and thinks that the ejection seat didn't work right because the seat is still inside the plane. But then he feels his parachute open and sees his burning Nighthawk falling into the night. There is complete peace instead of the chaos of the spinning wreck. As Zalko takes it all in, he breathes deeply. He's still living, but then he has another thought. Mom is going to be mad about this man. He knows that his enemies will be looking for him. He can still be saved and get back home without any more problems if he can fall to the ground without being seen. He looks up, though. 
He sees that his parachute is a bright orange color. He looks like he's waving a flare. His plans to stay hidden have failed, so he pulls out a survival radio to let everyone know he's still alive and well. The last spot, Vega 3 to 1, the last seat in the plane, after the target point. From up high, Zalco can see a ditch. I'm alive! He doesn't have much more time to talk before he falls. He is now by himself, far behind enemy lines. Zalco heads for the hole he saw on the way down. He quickly covers himself in mud and hides until help arrives. The news of the down plane gets around very quickly. The Serbs don't waste any time and start looking right away. As more and more guys show up, the activity around him picks up speed. Did you hear that? Men Keep from the moving. Serbian army search the area. As word gets out, local cops and civilians join them. Everyone needs to find him. The fields are lit up by flashlights and cars drive by on the highway nearby. Zolko has no choice but to pray and sit still. The sound gets louder as he hears rustling in the bushes. Someone is looking just outside his ditch. He holds his breath and stays still and quiet like a rock. He hears someone snuffling and panting. It's a dog. With great care, Zalko slowly pulls out his knife. It gets closer to the dog. He thinks about what to do. Should he kill the dog? Could he do it without being heard if he did? He finally decides not to kill the dog because he thinks that the owner would not be able to catch him. The dog then turns, jumps up and walks away, which made Zalko very happy. The radio starts to play. Sandy Zero of one Vega, 31 of over. There are big eyes on Zalko. They're here, Sandy Zero, one feel free to cross. Can I go down to Vega 31? Vega 31. Will it be okay? It Zalko doesn't answer. He peeks out from where he's hiding to look for danger. Flashlights can be seen far away. Vega 31, if you do not respond, Vega 31. we will try again later. We'll try this again later if you don't answer. He makes his choice. Okay, let's do it. The infrared flash is turned on by Zalco. As a helicopter flies into the area, the light doesn't work though, so the helicopter yeah, yeah. can't see him. He curses his luck and looks for threats with all his might. He has a backup plan, but it's not nearly as sneaky. But now or never. When Zalco needs to act quickly, he pops a flare. He is surrounded by bright light that lights up the area and shows both the relief helicopter and the enemy where he island. There he is. The helicopter comes in quickly, and at the same time, the enemy comes in from behind. A lot of flashlights from enemy patrols are directed at the flare. The radio then sends out another signal. Stop your flash, it's making it hard for us to see at night. Quick thinking Zalco quickly grabs the flare and Omega dumps it in the mud. Just then, an American rescue team lands right in front of him from the rescue plane. Is everything okay with you, sir? Okay, let's leave now. A helicopter takes off and leaves a scene with only seconds to spare before the enemy spills over the landing site. The field is blown around by the wind. Zoltan, Danny, and his crew are still the only ones who have shot down a stealth plane in battle. In the future, Danny would say of the event, when it hit, it felt very good. The US didn't destroy the wreck, and the Serbian forces Stay were sharp. able to save the badly damaged Nighthawk without any problems. You can still see parts of Zalko's plane at the Museum of Aviation in Belgrade today. It was always Zalko's dream to find the person who killed him and praise him. His wish came true in 2011, 12 years after the event. At the end of the 20th century, there were a lot of really great war stories. Many people think this is the last tank fight of the century. 